So, um, well, today we are over, back over in the Pacific Northwest um, and um, we're going to be talking to Riz Rees. And Riz um, came to my attention, well, over a year ago now, I think. Um, lots of people were saying, you've got to check this guy out. You've got to check this guy out. He's amazing. And, um, and so I did. And I thought, yeah, we've definitely got to have Riz on. Um, I, would, I think well, I'm going to let Riz talk about himself and his background but i would say horticulturalist and floriculturalist maybe riz i think does that does that um describe you possibly um but anyway welcome and i think riz definitely wins the prize for the most beautiful uh, beautifully staged uh set or screen um lovely absolutely wonderful thank you so thank riz you. welcome it's really nice to have you here Thank you so much. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I always feel like I have too many hats on. So uh, <laughs> yeah, horticulturist, florist, right? I, yeah. But that's the beauty of what we do, right? Is uh, exactly. these wonderful opportunities that we get to work with plants and flowers and all the different uh, ways of doing so. Uh, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so, so Riz, tell, tell us exactly where you are in the Pacific Northwest so that everybody knows where you are and where you're located. Yeah, so um, I am just north of Seattle. Uh, I say Seattle just because it's the most uh, uh, famous city and most well known. And, um, and yeah, so I lived in um, just immediately north of the city uh, border of, of Seattle uh, in Lake Forest Park. And I'm right now I'm at work, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, just uh, snuck into um, an, a meeting room here um, in Bothell, uh, Washington, which is um, uh, just north of uh, uh, of where I'm living. So yeah, basically within a few minutes, you can travel four different cities <laughs> where, yeah. where I am. So yeah, yeah, north of Seattle. Wonderful. And, and, and are you on the coast or quite close to the coast? Yeah, so uh, pretty close to uh, the Puget Sound, which is the large uh, body of water that's nearby here, but also uh, where I am currently, we're just north of Lake Washington. So uh, close proximity to a large uh, body of water, which of course uh, creates for many interesting microclimates in yeah. which we get to experiment with the wonderful plant palette uh, yeah. here. Fantastic. So Riz, talk us through your backstory in terms of how did you get to where you are now? Because I know, um, you know, you, you, you do do lots of things and it'd be just very interesting to know, you know, uh, how you came to be um, it, where you are now, both physically, but also, um, you know, doing the work that you're doing. Yeah. Um... Oh gosh, well I've been uh, gardening and uh, been involved with plants since I was very little. Uh, so I'm from the Philippines, uh, born in the Philippines actually, and in the uh, island of Luzon. So uh, basically, uh, oh I want to say four or five hours north of Manila, the capital. And um, I grew up in a fruit plantation actually that my dad ran. So we grew mangoes and bananas, coffee, that sort of thing, but primarily mangoes. And so I think that was kind of my early exposure to um, being around uh, plants. And also my uh, grandmother's house, uh, she had a huge front yard. So really lush, you know, uh, tropicals and, um, and, you know, things that I never really paid attention to uh, until now where, you know, they're all basically houseplants, you know, for us. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, different types of flowers, fruits. Uh, I'm, to this day, I'm obsessed with fruits, <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, both the tropical ones that, uh, that I grew up with in our backyard. And um, also as a kid, I was obsessed with apples. So because they're, you know, they don't grow there, so they're imported. So they're very, very expensive. And mm -hmm. um, so it was always this uh, very special treat to get an apple, you know, when I was younger. And then, of course, when we came to the U.S., uh, I was seven years old, and I remember growing, going to a grocery store, and of course, there's, you know, a bazillion different <laughs> kinds of apples that are uh, locally grown, um, so, and I still love apples, <laughs> um, but, um, but typically in the grocery stores here, um, uh, so I would always gravitate towards the produce department because, you know, I just, yeah, I love my fruits and vegetables. I was very lucky to have that instilled in me as a kid to, you know, eat my fruit and veg. So, uh, typically next to produce is the floral department. Uh, so that's kind of where, um, the curiosity for flowers and plants really began. Mm -hmm. Um, and also really intrigued about design and, um, and I learned early on the impact of plants and also flowers when you have flowers and you know give flowers to uh to people um how it made them feel 
you know, I always seem to make people smile. And I thought, oh, well, that's, you know, I want to make people smile. I want to make people happy. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, and, and of course, with that comes, uh, uh, you know, when you're a young boy, well, first, you know, I was new to the country, seven years old, I didn't speak really any English. So um, um, I kind of, you know, just try to, you know, uh, stumble through, through new culture and also all the sort of growing pains, I guess you could say, of, of growing up. And, you know, when you're uh, a boy and yeah. uh, you like flowers and, and, and plants, uh, you're, um, uh, you're kind of a target, I guess, for, oh. um, you know, for, you know, being teased and, yeah. uh, and kind of being bullied and stuff. So uh, I uh, definitely had to, um, to go through that. Um, but even then, I think back how, uh, how hard that was but to, to, you know, where I am now. I think is uh, is pretty remarkable that I actually stuck with it. I didn't yeah. let you know the teasing and you know all their um, you know me being made fun of kind of mm. deter me from um, from from this field. It mm. was more like a fuel almost to be like, you know what, I'm gonna you know learn every single plant and you know and just you know, I'll show them, you know, sort yeah, of, yeah. um, sort of thing. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know if I have, but I <laughs> certainly feel like I've, um, uh, you know, been very privileged to be able to do so many things with my career now. Um, and yeah, and I get to make people smile and, yeah. and, and happy. So, uh, that's always kind of the, you know, the ultimate reward as hard work as it is, as yeah. busy as it is. Um, it's, uh, you, there's always a way to be reminded each day, each you know season, mm. that um, that there's something very rewarding to all this, and I'm gonna make it work. So. And Ruth, when 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 you going back to when you were you know a young boy and adolescent, how, how what were your teachers like? Did your teachers uh, support you in your love of horticulture and flowers and plants? I mean, w were you given you know encouragement at school for this as a career? Uh, that's a great question. Yes, I, I, I was very lucky in that, um, uh, that yeah, I, I think with any, you know, good teachers, you know, you look at all your students uh, and uh, try to seek their potential. Mm -hmm. And I think they saw something, you know, that it was different, but it was something that they were also, you know, mildly interested in. Um, but the main thing was, um, I stayed out of trouble. I mean, yeah. I think that was the main thing, you know, I didn't, um, uh, you know, I wasn't the kid that would go around and pull girls hair, or, you yeah. know, their funny yeah. tail yeah. or uh, anything like that, or, you know, uh, do anything. I just sort of kept to myself, mm -hmm. kept to my plants, that sort of thing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, all my teachers through um, grade school uh, were very supportive. They encouraged me to, you know, bring things for, you know, show and tell. And yeah. um, I actually reconnected with through Facebook through uh, my first and second grade teacher. Um, I had oh, her wow. for two years. And um, what a, yeah, this was a few years ago, we reconnected, finally saw her in, in person, mm -hmm. and to just, you know, share and look back. Oh, really? And uh, she was so proud. And I bet. Uh, yeah. so it was, it was great. So I was very lucky. And who, who were your role models then when, when you were thinking about going into this, you know, uh, in terms of a career, who, who, who were you kind of modeling yourself on or, or were you, you know, who, who were the people that you were looking up to? Mm. So uh, I was thinking about this the other day, actually. Um, most of my early influences were um, uh, television because mm -hmm. it was basically uh, how I learned about more about, uh, you know, American culture, uh, learning to speak English, of course. Um, I discovered, um, uh, here it's PBS, which is our uh, public television. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so we would watch, uh, they, they would be the shows that had a lot of documentaries, but also they had the shows, uh, children's shows like Sesame Street, for example, which I grew up watching in the Philippines. So when I would watch television here, I'd like, oh, you know, there's Big Bird and Bert and Ernie, you know? <laughs> Um, and uh, Oscar the Grouch, <laughs> all of them. And in that same public television realm, they had the, the gardening shows. So I watched a show growing up called The Victory Garden. And um, so um, uh, Roger Swain was the host, but they also had the international correspondent to a name you all might know, um, Peter Seabrook. Um, so um, I just watched, um, you know, all the different things that they talked about, the demonstrations, um, how to, you know, 
uh, plant your squash. And then of course there was a cooking segment. And then, uh, but with Peter, um, he's someone I almost met. I went to Chelsea a few years ago and he was um, uh, giving a presentation to a committee and I really wanted the chance to meet him, yeah. but I didn't get to. But, um, um. but anyway, I was amazed at how, you know, he went everywhere around the world wow. from, you know, orchids in Singapore to, you know, the Philadelphia, you know, like flower show, like into South Africa and like, oh my gosh, like I want to be him, <laughs> you know? Wow. Um, and I want to be right. able to, um, uh, you know, just share in the, this enthusiasm and kind of open up the world, you know, not wow. just for myself, but, you know, to others as well. Wow. Um, so those were kind of the early, you know, influences, um, you know, growing up. And then as I got more involved with the gardening community, then I, um, people uh, began to notice because, of course, I'm like the only, you know, like the youngest person that goes to all the garden clubs and meetings and lectures. Um, and I'm also usually the only person of color. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of stood out. Um, but then, even then, I had wonderful, wonderful mentors that basically took me under their wing who, you know, even before I had my driver's license, they would, um, you know, shuttle me around to garden tours and um and then uh and then yeah they were uh, saying oh you need to meet so and so this is the person and that and you know throughout the community here um and one of those uh folks is dan hinckley of course who uh, lives just across the pond here wow, <laughs> um lucky. and um i remember yeah he actually uh he wrote me a card a long long time ago he wrote this card from heronswood um and and it was it was actually a package he sent me a box <gasps> of his old gardening books and oh, saying goodness. that um you should uh uh, you know, I, I, you know, I need to make room for my library, and I'm sure, uh, and I'm sure you put these, you know, to use. But the funny thing was, um, the books that he sent. I mean, still very, very grateful for them. Don't get me wrong. Um, I've uh, actually like read them all. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> but um, uh, but in a way, it made sense. And they're like, okay, well, if he's you know recommending these titles, it made it seem like okay, well, I think I'm on the like right path here, you know. Yeah. Um, were they were they his book? Were they his books? The ones that he wrote? No, no? <laughs> they were. Um, it was a series of uh, different uh, topics. So there was one on yeah. bulbs, one on house plants, one on you know plant propagation and that sort of thing. And I think I still have them actually. My mom's oh, house. So I should wow. check and, and and see, but. Um, but yeah, so a lot of those early influences and then just mentors, uh, yeah, you know, too yeah. many to mention and to name who were so nice to, mm -hmm. um, yeah, take me everywhere to share uh, seeds, to share cuttings and divisions from their gardens. Mm. And, and that's the thing too, even today, uh, I have a lot of those plants that they've, that they've shared. Mm. And of course, I continue to share them. with others. Yeah, that's amazing. So then um, what, how did you, how did you, uh, what studies did you do? So well, after high school, where did you, where did you mm. train? Yeah, so where did I train? Wow, you make me sound like an athlete. <laughs> 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 yeah, the training. <laughs> the early 4 a.m. workouts, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, leading. Um, so um, I went to the University of Washington. So after high school, um, I had two choices actually after graduating uh, our high school here. Uh, one was to go to what we call a community college or a technical college, which is a two-year program um, in horticulture. And then there's university, which is typically four years. And I think um, I applied to the university, I think because um, uh, even though the two-year programs are actually more well-known here in terms of horticulture, because mm -hmm. they actually train individuals to work immediately after they finish, mm -hmm. whereas university, of course, you know, takes a little bit longer. But um, I felt a little pressure to, to go to university because um, um, my parents were... Um, kind of skeptical about, mm -hmm. um, you know, the direction that I was going as, mm -hmm. you know, any parent, you know, uh, would be to make sure that, you know, their children like are immigrant, immigrant parents in particular, you know, yeah. doctor, accountant, engineer. Exactly. Exactly. And in a way, I had that in mind, too, um, you know, when I was choosing my courses to make sure that, OK, well, if horticulture doesn't work out, um, at least I'll, you know, try to get my through my math and through all my biology and all those, you know, prerequisites and all those core requirements. 
but um, but I think I showed uh, and they saw that I was very involved, you know, because, you know, they would see that, you know, I would be in the newspaper or in like a magazine or uh, mm. that sort of thing. And like, oh, you know, but the main thing for them, I think, is uh, I stayed out of trouble, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the main <laughs> thing. But then, um, but I think they also, yeah, naturally concerned that, um, and also just made me like, okay, you need to start working, you know, because I would, um, you know, garden on the side. Um, my mom actually got me a job at a retirement home facility to work at a restaurant, and which I was very grateful for, actually, which mm -hmm. I feel like everyone should have a job in food service um, to <laughs> understand what the service industry is like and mm -hmm. how to treat people mm -hmm. um, because you are treated in every single different way um, <laughs> that uh, really builds, you know, your, your character. Yeah. Um, and I think for me too, it helped working in a retirement home because it felt made me more comfortable speaking to those that are older, you know, elders, yeah. you know, having the patience and, um, and yeah, and just to, you know, to learn to listen, mm -hmm. I think was mm -hmm. one of the things I, I took away. I also made some wonderful friends. So anyway, yeah, a lot of pressure to just, um, you know, make sure I had a job that I could support myself. I could, you know, pay my bills and, mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. Mm. Um, but yeah, so university, um, it took me five years actually to finish because I studied abroad. Uh, I went to China to study actually wow. for a school year. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but yeah, uh, and then, uh, I considered doing, you know, masters, maybe continue on, but, um, uh, you know, school's hard, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very, uh, the time commitment on top of, you know, growing things and all the things that I've been involved with. But, um, but it's, it, it, it was key. It was really important to get that degree under my belt, um, to have that experience, that base of knowledge in, in, in horticulture, botany, I have a minor in botany. Um, and uh, also to change things up, I also have a minor in dance. Um, so uh, it was uh, nice to be able to do the field work in the morning, lecture in the afternoon, and later on go to the studio and dance. So you so, were training. You were training. Yeah, so yes, there is training involved. <laughs> yes. Do you somehow combine the two at all? Um, there have been ideas. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are sure there I, yeah. ideas. I, I think the biggest thing, I'm glad you mentioned that, Noel, because one of the classes that I took was dance composition. Mm -hmm. And it taught me so much about uh, composition and um, in just in terms of design and garden design as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different concepts where we talk about, uh, you know, shape and movement of things. But also one of the biggest design lessons I've ever learned was, um, you know, less is more. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the, mm -hmm. one of the biggest takeaways I had from, um, from dance because it's easy to want to impress you know with you know dynamic movements and throw everything and at it yeah, yeah exactly yeah. well I'm kind of like this now you know where it's like it's okay a little bit of everything in your face sort of you know thing but we you don't know, mind we don't mind but slowly though I'm gonna yeah. you know rearrange stuff here you know oh, sometimes no, you don't have to yeah, yeah, like, but sometimes less can be more, right? Yeah, and sometimes, yeah. you know, where the focus should be, you need to be able to emphasize and, you know, to pay attention to those sorts of details. So, uh, yeah, dance has taught me a lot about the, about that sort of aspect of it. And to also to be expressive, you know, yeah. to uh, have to be authentic and to come from within when, mm -hmm. um, with your movement and with your work. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the same thing goes, is true when I'm designing a garden for someone or even putting together my own uh, landscape mm -hmm. is um, it, uh, it has to come from, you know, from within. So, sure. so yeah, so definitely lessons there. From. So where in China were you and, 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 and were you studying at a college? Was it like an exchange or? It yeah. was an yeah. exchange. Yes. Yeah. So um, I got to go to the mother of gardens, as they say, I was in Sichuan province mm. and, um, and guess who I got to go on a plant expedition with <laughs> not Roy Lancaster no but I oh, wish I, have, um, I, I would turn off now if it was Roy Lancaster <laughs> who did you go with who would you um Mr. Hinckley himself oh um, wow lovely well so, that's almost second best <laughs> yeah but it's it was amazing and it almost didn't happen. I mean, that you know, actually that in itself is a talk, actually, when I do yeah, a talk on uh, I bet, uh, I bet. in China. But it was one of those things where um, the right place at the right time, but oh. also the thanks to the generosity of the gardening community here who actually pitched in to help raise money for me to join in this um, in this trip that he this collecting trip that he had planned out. 
And um, so, yeah, it was uh, Dan and I, and then uh, two nurserymen from Georgia, and then a colleague from uh, from Canada that came. It was my first time. Wow. And, uh, so yeah, so many stories uh, to. Yeah, uh, to yeah. Was there. it was it exciting in itself? As 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 was it quite? You know, were you going out into the into the to the jungle, as it were, or you know, was it really exciting or? So it was in many different aspects. Mm. It was also kind of, I, you know, I expected to rough it, you know, as they yeah. say, you know, like, you know, camps and, you know, leeches yeah. and everything like that, which, you know, uh, we, yeah, the leeches are, ter are terrible oh, um, yeah. creatures, but, um, but yeah, no, we had like hotels each night. It was oh, right. you know, okay. <laughs> running water. Um, but we, we did kind of trash the place. Cause like we would clog up the bathroom sinks, cleaning seed and that sort of <laughs> stuff. And um, I would bring in bugs. Oh my God, this was horrible. Um, so I was collecting herbarium specimens, you know, to press um, and uh, not realizing all the uh, little creatures that I was, you know, potentially bringing yeah. in. So one night we were sleeping in the room. I had to use the bathroom and um, and uh, I shouldn't have turned on the lights. Oh, <laughs> Let's no. put it that way. <laughs> Turn on the lights. I'm looking up at the ceiling and it was this like entomologist like collage of like <laughs> bugs. So I'm just like, I'm just going to turn the light off right now and just crawl in the bathroom. Um, <laughs> But um, hated you. <laughs> but, um, um. but anyway, it, it was great. And it was also my first time really venturing out like that. So uh, I learned a lot and experienced a lot. But it also set me up for the rest of the, uh, the trip because then I had the ability to organize my own um, uh, uh, botany um, excursions, let's put it that way, because um, I was there for a year, uh, school year, and then this trip with Dan uh, happened early on in that phase, so, um, but yeah, so a great experience, and one thing I always encourage um, students to take part in, if they're able, is to study abroad, no matter where it is in the world, mm -hmm. to to get to gain those experiences. Yeah, absolutely. So when when you returned back and you'd finished college, where was your first job? What what were you what were you doing? What was your first horticultural role? My first horticultural role, well, already at that time, I had my own business. Um, um, so I, as a, a young teenager, I had a small little specialty nursery that wow. I, um, so I would go to plant sales or uh, plant fairs. Is that what you call them? Yeah, there? yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, it was basically, um, I say business, but to be honest, it's just, you know, even today is like a glorified hobby <laughs> um, because, you know, you're not really making that much money, but, um, but in a way it was uh, one to share my plants. I was, you know, um, collecting and propagating so many different types of plants that gardeners, you know, seem to want. Mm -hmm. So um, I would do that. Uh, and then of course, meet different people, build community. And then, um, so I was already selling plants then. Um, but then after graduating, I figured, okay, I need, you know, like big boy job, you know, <laughs> I need to um, have secure, you know, benefits and all this sort of thing. Um, so at uh, where I went to school at the University of Washington, um, a position had opened up for a temporary position uh, for horticulturists at the Center for Urban Horticulture. And so uh, it was just timing worked out. Um, that the, the position was there and open and it was a part-time position temporary uh, and then they um, uh, posted it to be a permanent position because the gardener and that role was um, was leaving so um, I got hired on for that position and was there at the Center for Urban Horticulture for eight years and then um, and then on this at the same time running uh, my uh, horticultural business. So growing plants, plant sales, uh, doing garden maintenance for uh, for uh, clients and that sort of thing. Mm. So I was really juggling a lot. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, so that was the the next uh, you know step there. And then after eight years, then I have my current uh, you know job here. Yeah. So. And, was, and did you make a specific um, uh, decision to stay in, in the Pacific Northwest because of the climate and therefore the, the, the breadth of, of plants that you could grow or, or, you know, was that a, was that a, a decision that you made or was it just sort of happenstance that you stayed in the, in the Pacific Northwest? What was, mm. what was your motivation there? That's a good question. And it's something I'm thinking about right now too, because um, the cost of living here is, insane and yeah. um and I, re I 
I want my own garden, uh, you yeah. know, my own place to actually, you know, grow and design on my own terms with no landlord, you know, questioning what I'm doing, that, that mm. sort of thing. But, um, but to answer your question, I think I made that decision because now um, this is the region, this is the area, part of the world that I'm familiar with and that mm -hmm. I know everything that I uh, teach, everything that I design and work with is here in the Northwest. Um, but at the same time, it, also with the floral stuff that I do, I figured, well, maybe if I'm looking for that next step, I can, you know, move to a different, you know, place to, um, you know, and, and, you know, gain a whole new skill set to learn a whole new plant palette and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, and I think, you know, I'm still, you know, young enough to be able to do it, but there is, yeah, it's hard to leave. <laughs> it's the Pacific um, Northwest. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, yeah. yeah. And there are many gardeners and professionals wanting to move here too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and of course, you know, the community and of course my family, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, is here, but, um, but yeah, so it's something I've been kind of thinking about, but I did make that decision um, uh, early on to just, you know, for the time being, get settled, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and uh, get established and then, uh, yeah, see what opportunities come about. Yeah. And so now you split your time between horticultural gardening and lecturing and teaching and um, and floristry as well. I mean, would you say, would you call it floristry or floriculture? What, how would you describe? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, I guess you could call it floristry. Um, there's a whole term now uh, the, that's being referred to as the farmer florist. <laughs> um, so uh, floral designers that are um, uh, getting growing, land yeah. and growing their own flowers. Mm. And so... I think being a horticulturist, uh, I always think of uh, floristry as sort of a way to um, uh, take advantage of the byproducts of horticulture, let's put it that way, yeah. from your clippings and, you know, cut things mm -hmm. that you would just, you know, throw into the, you know, rubbish bin. And, uh, but, you know, there's beauty in that. And mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. loved kind of every time we would do like a dump run, um, you know, to the yard to um, get rid of our, uh, you know, clippings after pruning and that sort of thing. Um, there's potential there, you know, mm -hmm. to create, uh, to create work. So, um, and it's something I do really kind of on the side, um, even though I do say I started with, you know, floral des design and actually wanting to be a florist early on, but then I kind of was, um, you know, uh, put off by it um, just because, um, uh, back then, I'm sure hopefully it's different now. Um, there tend to be a lot of egos in in <laughs> in, in that field, uh, you know, because when you're a designer too, I mean, mm -hmm. it's uh, it was just hard to feel um, accepted yeah. in that field. So, um, uh, but you know, but it's changed uh, because yeah. I yeah. have wonderful mentors and colleagues, designer yeah. friends who have taught me so much. Uh, but now I basically moonlight, as they say, as as a floral designer. So usually events, weddings, um, you know, special requests, um, yeah. and but and when I have time to just um, you know create kind of my own work using mm -hmm. the materials that I have uh, with me, which I'm. Um, you know, really blessed with. I mean, everywhere you go, there's ways to uh, like, oh gosh, that would look great in a bouquet or yeah. uh, on a hairpiece or, you know, whatever. It might yeah. be a floral crown. Um, so uh, yeah, so it, it, it's just uh, another thing <laughs> I yeah. get, to, get yeah. to do. And so what, what are you surrounded with there? Well, you've got to, have you chosen some special plants that are sort of, you know, particularly of, of interest yeah. to you? Yeah, so um, again, this was, I think I mentioned to you before, it's just trying to decide, okay, what do I share? Um, yeah. But the one, main thing I really would um, like to share with you is um, a plant from uh, my homeland, from the Philippines that I uh, uh, got reconnected with. It's not exactly quite the same um, uh, uh, type, but um, anyway, it's this plant here. Let's see if mm. I can show you the flower. Okay. Oops. So it's very, they're not very long lasting flowers. Okay. But if you would smell this, it's, um, it always takes me home. Wow. And what so, is it? It looks beautiful. This is Jasminum Sambac. Uh, oh. It's also known as the Arabian Jasmine. Mm -hmm. And in the Philippines, we call it Sampaguita. And um, it's uh, a, a flower and a plant of my childhood because uh -huh. uh, when we were younger, my sister and I, we would have this competition of who would wake up the earliest to <laughs> run down to the Sampaguita and to collect all the flowers. And we would string them 
um, like a lay, um, and uh, and we would put them on uh, the statue of the Virgin Mary in the altar. Oh, wow. um, so um, and it was of course really fragrant. And yeah, it was either uh, her and I. Uh, he would run down and collect as many of these flowers as possible to make that you know kind of garland. Yeah. So the scent and that memory always lingers with me. So um, here, of course, it's a house plant, and right. I'm glad it's blooming right now, so I can sh share it with you. Yeah. Um, this is a single form of it. The one that we grew in the Philippines is a double flowered form. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but yeah, so it's, it's very special. And it's also the same jasmine they'll use to scent uh, jasmine tea. Oh, okay. um, and also um, in India, they'll use these flowers for garlands, for ornaments, for uh, you know, mm -hmm. different ceremonies and, um, and that sort of thing. So um, I'm glad it encompasses a lot of different uh, cultures for this very simple um, and very beautiful and fragrant flower. Oh, and oh. so it's not a climbing, it's not a climber then, is it? Actually, is it, it is. It, um, is. It, um, it has a tendency to, uh, to be a climber. Mm -hmm. um, as a house plant, we kind of keep it trimmed down because then mm -hmm. you can encourage more side shoots and more flowers. But mm -hmm. if I were to let this go, it would be basically um, a vine. Right. So, um, so yeah, like a lot of jasmines that we're uh, that we're familiar with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so I made sure to have that, and then of course, um, um, orchids now are kind of you know uh, they've always been popular. But they are one that I think I um, took on because, well, one, they're very beautiful, but they're also a plant that my family recognized and they recognize how precious they are. Mm -hmm. um, so they're always really impressed when they see, you know, an orchid, you know, uh, blooming and, and flowering. Mm -hmm. And of course, Phalaenopsis is actually native uh, to the Philippines. Um, so I, I grow several species and I grow a lot of different hybrids. And this one is... Um, actually when I found at a grocery store and believe it or not, some Phalaenopsis have a fragrance. Um, a lot of them have been bred um, from uh, species that possess fragrant flowers. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll often see hybrids like this one that have a scent. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I figured I needed to grow things that um, that would impress my family, or you know, yeah. to to you know convince them that you know, yeah, I know my stuff, you know, and that I that I have the skill to grow these things that they're really uh, impressed with. And the same thing too with you know with the jasmine, with the sampaguita, yeah. you know, when they see it blooming, you know they instantly know it and I feel like I've just you know reconnected with them because yeah. they you know like you know talk about you know roses rhododendron you know um mm -hmm. things like you know ferns hostas like sort mm -hmm. of thing they're just like eh. <laughs> you know yeah. um but um but yeah I think those are some of the key things oh, there's a little bug in here um <laughs> <I'm good at> bringing <laughs> bugs inside this is terrible um and what, but, what do you think about the um the sort of uh, I mean it maybe I don't know if it's the same in the states but but that now you know house plants are suddenly becoming well not even suddenly I mean you know have become so much more popular yeah, um, it's lost five years or so really I yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah 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 and 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 with and with younger people as well you know so you know is, is it the same in the states Riz? Oh my gosh, um, yeah. it is insane. Um, so I, I say that because just the cost of plants right now um, at local garden centers are astronomical. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I brought a plant here um, uh, that uh, is fetching uh, pretty uh, high prices. And for me, I mean, I've grown this plant for many years. This is philodendron pink princess. It's a oh, variegated um, yeah. uh, phil philodendron. So yeah, it's all in social media from you know, YouTube, TikToks about it like and you know for a plant like this this is a cutting from a plant that I've grown for years you know this is easily 200 300 dollars like no. at times for yeah like on eBay Incredible. or something it's for what, absurd for, for, for one that size yes one this size maybe even smaller Incredible. um so in a way, it's kind of neat because it's sort of bringing out this sort of collector's mentality that we you know mm -hmm. we all have as, as gardeners, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but it's just sort of unfortunate that, um, you know, that it's kind of, you know, made a lot of these plants so inaccessible. Mm -hmm. So that's been kind of my, you know, gripe. Um, and even the same thing with like the, you know, the cut leaf, you know, monster ad and Sonia too, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, but one thing I do love about what's happening with the houseplant movement uh, right now is, even a little cutting like this, you know, from my plant at home, I can share with a friend. I yeah. can, you know, put in a glass of water and, and root. Um, and I think one of the things that um, the houseplants is doing, and that I hope that it's doing, that it's teaching 
um, this next generation of uh, potential gardeners mm -hmm. to learn a lot of the fundamental fundamental basics of growing. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, paying attention to watering, fertilizing, mm -hmm. pest mm -hmm. and disease control, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. And once they've you know quote mastered that, you know, by mm -hmm. growing houseplants, if they have the space in the future to have a um, outdoor garden, mm. they'll find that it's much easier <laughs> where yeah. you're not having to, you know, control every aspect of your indoor space to try and get these, you know, plants to grow. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's been interesting to observe. Mm -hmm. I'm not, by all means, not an expert at all, you know, or an authority on, on house plants. Um, but, you know, I have my fair share, you know, I've got my little spider plant, um, <laughs> which is a beautiful <laughs> plant. No, it's a variety called Bonnie that I just got. Um, called, it's called Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure, you know, it's not the most marketable name, but hey, that's what the label said. But it's essentially <laughs> a curly leaf form of chlorophytum, <laughs> um, you know, our a good old spider plant. Um, but I love that it's uh, curly here. It almost looks yeah. like, um, uh, like a tillandsia, like an air plant, um, yeah. which I do also grow. Um, where did they go? Anyway, I brought it here with me somewhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, easy to grow hanging in a basket here. I have it, you know, in a ceramic container. Yeah. But um, so easy plants um, that uh, people can have and can grow. Um, so it's the um, the fundamental basics. It's the catalyst for mm -hmm. you know for all this house plants and also with the, with the cut flowers too that mm -hmm. I've been uh, doing people understand cut flowers you give someone a bouquet and like oh that's very beautiful um but then if you make it interesting enough with you know a lot of different you know unique things from your own garden then hopefully they'll start oh what's this what's that you know yeah yeah so i hope this is the same thing can happen with uh with house plants and you know having that appreciation for uh nature and also um to, to nurture you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as we all know here as gardeners uh plants teach us these incredible life lessons mm. you know mm. some thrive um some die um mm -hmm. some do well some don't uh some change over time mm -hmm. um some plants you like sometimes uh, there are plants you need to move on from you know yeah. so yeah, yeah. All those I mean, with, with, with with plant with house plants in particular which has been been ever i suppose probably at least five years now very much mm -hmm. a, a youth movement and a lot of uh, sort of traditional passing on of cuttings between people. So effectively, in many ways, very non-commercial and succulents as well. Yes. Um, where, just wondering where that's, um, it's in a way, it's quite, in a way, quite subversive, isn't it? Because it's taking things outside of the commercial sector. And it seems to be, I think, particularly with succulents, hugely expanding the range of, of plants that are being, that are being, that are being grown. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it really has been one of the most uh, encouraging developments for, for, for a yeah. long time. Oh, and and I'm pinching it, myself for not bringing in a succulent to talk about because, that's yeah. Right. That's social media. I mean, do you think it's all social media has also played a part? Because you're know, looking through TikTok and Facebook and all these Facebook groups, uh, all sorts of groups and looking through and, and incredibly global very often as, uh, as well. And do, do you see a connection with social media? Oh, my gosh, absolutely. Um, there are times where... Uh, I would try to encourage people to stay out of social media, give yourself a break from social media, <laughs> but it's also been this incredible tool, as Noel mentioned, to share information yeah. um, and also, you know, you know, represent basically, oh, here's, you know, what I'm doing and like, oh, that looks great. You know, I want to do the same thing. So the influence, you know, the influencers, as they yeah. say, um, are, uh, are, are there and are everywhere. And it's been nice to see. Um, it's also been kind of, um, I don't know, sometimes I scratch my head I'm thinking like, what is this? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I just always have to make sure that, um, that the correct information is being shared. Um, so for example, like succulents, for example, when we see them in like terrariums, um, you know, trying to tell people, you know, that's not really their um, <laughs> natural <laughs> environment. I mean, it's beautiful, you know, uh, you know, it's very, you know, very classy, very, you know, uh, very stylish in a way. But, uh, but yeah, just keep in mind, you know, sort of, mm. you know, sort of thing. Um, but also too, with the succulent movement uh, uh, that Noel had mentioned, has mentioned, I think it's also teaching us as gardeners, um, to uh, be mindful of our, the plant palette that we work with, whether it's indoors or out. I think succulents um, uh, pique the interest of many uh, new gardeners because, oh, it's a succulent, I don't have to water it as much. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the main, you know, one of the main um, 
things that kind of got that going. But I think it also teaches us a lesson uh, when you are gardening outdoors as well and, um, and changing your plant palette in a way that we can be a little bit more uh, mindful about how we use our resources. Mm. Um, so especially with, you know, with, uh, you, uh, with water being, um, you know, we talk about rain, like, yes, we welcome the rain, um, especially the farmers here, my gosh. Um, just to make sure, you know, if we have a pretty mild winter and not a lot of snow up in the mountains, it impacts our, our agricultural industry here tremendously. So, um, so yeah, uh, I think a lot of lessons can be derived from, uh, from, from, from the, the, you know, the, uh, the trend in in succulents and so it's still around um, and um, you know so uh, hopefully it's uh, here to stay and people are discovering uh, many different types you know mm -hmm. not just uh, you know the echeverias and yeah. you know hens and chicks and all that sort of stuff I mean there's a lot out there and then there's also a lot that are very hardy too uh, we have a desert garden here at work and um, and I always hear that the, the comments from people, first of all, they're amazed. Um, I love the children who are like, oh, I, there's a cactus. Yeah, it's yeah. like, actually, it's an apuntia, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, prickly pear. Um, but, um, but yeah, they see like the hardy agaves and all the different uh, plants that we have here. And, you know, you also have like the know-it-alls too that are out and about that are like, oh yeah, you know, none of this grows here. They have to dig all this up and put them in the greenhouse. And I have to, you know, politely like actually you know yeah, um, yeah. there are some that are um, that are hardy they are high elevation you know desert plants that withstand the cold but uh, would uh, but cannot withstand the winter wet and that's mm -hmm. the biggest issue that we have here mm -hmm. so which means yeah amending the soil um, you know raising you know the uh, you know, the grade um, and uh, that sort of thing so drainage 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 is is key yeah and there's a caterpillar on my laptop <laughs> <laughs> um, Obviously, so, wild, wildlife loves you. So, if so, if somebody was to give you a parcel of land, you know, like the Dan Hinckley box of books. If if somebody was to give you a parcel of land somewhere, say in the Pacific Northwest, and you were going to start a nursery, what would your nursery? What would you sell, or what would you grow, and therefore, what would you be selling? Oh gosh. Um... I think I told myself that I never will ever have a nursery ever again. <laughs> um, just knowing how much work it really do, it does take. Um, there are certain individuals that um, just have the natural, you know, stamina mm -hmm. actually to uh, make it run. And that was the key word that I learned. Um, are you guys familiar with Annie's Hayes or Annie's Annuals? Yes, um, yes. Hasn't, hasn't, hasn't she just closed that though? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not closed. Uh, not she, closed. Um, she, they shifted ownership. So right. she passed it on to a new, um, a new yeah. owner who I've yet to meet, but yeah. um but Annie's is, uh, and Annie herself is absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, she had me uh, do a talk in a, in a floral demonstration at the nursery a few years ago. It was mm -hmm. so much fun. Um, it was from one of their garden parties that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just, uh, it was great. It was absolutely um, uh, just, I don't want to use the word perfect, but it was one of those like, oh, special wow. Days. Yeah, very, yeah. very yeah. special. Yeah. Um, anyway um she mentioned and i asked her too like gosh you know uh, with uh, you know if you own a nursery when you are you know working with a perishable product that's variable and you know there's so many things that need to happen to make it work and then things that need to happen to so you actually make money mm -hmm. um and very few people very few nurseries actually make money mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and and many uh, nurserymen will be honest about that mm -hmm. so you have to strategize and you have to um as annie said yeah uh, have the stamina and um you know to be there with your crew to help with you know potting up to help with um the deliveries and unloading the trucks and all that sort of thing yeah it, it and, definitely uh, is a labor of love isn't it running a it nursery absolutely yeah. is yeah. so you um been, must have been that there, done that moved yes, on no. <laughs> yes no no we'll use to have a nursery um pat who's in the in the audience is asking what would you be growing in your own garden so if you you know if you were if you were developing a garden yeah what, oh yeah so you had your, your question too about yeah. if i was given this parcel of land yeah um yeah. so um I think of all my friends and colleagues that, uh, you know, have had and designed their beautiful gardens. The main takeaway I have from them is um, the welcoming space, you know, having a place to gather, I think is very important. 
Mm -hmm. So if I were to design it, um, there would be places where we can, you know, just sit and, and chat, relax, and, um, and also, um, you know, have opportunities to, you know, hold a, a little class and a little workshop and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, Jens, Jens Jensen, he made a great thing of that. What did he call, what did he call them? Community circles? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and he, he designed so many of them into his, uh, into his parks and public yeah. landscapes. And it's very important to have those spaces because I think a lot of um, very serious gardeners tend to be very, uh, you know, they're collectors, you know, with all the rare and precious plants and that sort of thing. And it becomes sort of this, um, you know, exclusive sort of, oh, you know, just my space and, you know, like, you know, and, and my private, you know, sort of garden, which I think, you know, I, I like and I, and I want. I, I, you know, I savor the private spaces that I create for myself. Myself. But I think it's also important to have spaces where you can gather and invite people uh, mm -hmm. to share what you do. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of plants that I would have, oh my gosh, that's the thing being here in the Northwest is, you know, like you want to have everything. <laughs> um, I, you know, I want to have the tropical garden. Um, now, uh, you know, to remind me of my memories of home, of the, of the Philippines, um, you need to have the fruit and veg garden too, um, because that's the garden that people um, yep. know and recognize. Yeah. Um, so if I were to have family over, it would be the place that, you know, that they would go and they could go, you know, have at it, you know, harvest mm -hmm. what they want and, you know, and prepare a meal together, um, you know, is wonderful. Yeah, I would love a desert garden. I'd love to have, you know, a, a native meadow um, and the mixed borders of course is uh, uh, you know the throwback uh, the rose garden so yeah I'm a bit obsessed with roses um, and so of course you know you've got um, the David Austins are in full bloom right now this is teasing <laughs> Georgia but I also had a phase of wanting of studying old garden roses growing mm -hmm. up uh, this is Jacques Cartier mm -hmm. and uh, oh my gosh they're, they're amazing so just you know the history and so having that of course we'd love to have you know poly houses greenhouses to be able to grow all the different you know wonderful tropical things um, uh, what else am I forgetting <laughs> you know just throw it at me I'm pretty sure I'd want it to have it as well <laughs> so, so if we, less is, well, I don't think less is more, is more. <laughs> no. very much. but you're allowed you're allowed to break rules so if we were lucky enough to come and spend the weekend with you Riz which gardens or landscapes would you take us to in your area? Oh my gosh, I hope that you, uh, we have that opportunity. It's one of the, been so the funnest I. things um, to do when I have friends and colleagues coming here to visit uh, that are you know, professional gardeners, horticulturist designers. Um, so first of all, um, you know, we'll make sure, again, this is the Filipino side of me, we're just the hospitality has to come first. Um, if you need to pick up at the airport, we'll pick you up at the airport. We'll make sure you're settled in with your accommodations. And if you've traveled <laughs> afar, if you need to rest, please, um, you know, do so. Because it's very easy to just be like, okay, <laughs> let's, you know, pick you up to the airport, you know, let's hop on a ferry and go to Heronswood or whatever. Yeah. Um, but no, first of all, I need to make sure if you've eaten, <laughs> make sure if you've eaten um and the pacific northwest is a wonderful place to eat i mean it's that asian yes. fusion um yes so i will take you directly time, to yeah. chinatown have proper you know authentic dim sum um oh, that's one of the wonderful you're things you're making me hungry Riz. <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> well it's about dinner time and it's almost lunch time here so i think it, you know uh, we need to um <laughs> get the juices flowing um but yeah um it's um I, I think that's one of the reasons why I've stayed here in this region mm. is, uh, mm. you know, there's a, a strong uh, Asian community uh, here, mm. uh, you know, wonderful food and, I, you know, it, it is home. Mm. Um, so, yeah, but to answer your question, um, so once you're settled, <laughs> um, <laughs> we would... Um, Oh gosh, like where to begin? First, we'll probably start with like a list and then and then I would ask my guests like, oh, you know, are, are there any um, gardens that you've heard of that you really are a must see, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we prioritize those. Um, but, um, but, and I would also make it a mix of both public gardens and private too. Mm -hmm. uh, I have wonderful friends who are willing to open their gardens um, to a small group um, uh, of, of people uh, to, to see. So you can actually, um, sorry, there's a spider. Yeah, here, <laughs> go to the spider plant. There we go. Um, and and uh, yeah, uh, so gosh, off the top of my list, yeah, of course, you know, Heron's Wood. And yeah. if Dan was available, maybe he'll let us visit Wincliffe, uh, mm -hmm. which is not too far. Um, 
and then um, the Blue Dell Reserve um, is one of my oh, favorite yeah. landscapes as well. Mm -hmm. And it's in the same like region in mm -hmm. the peninsula. So you basically you know make a loop, um, and then. Um, uh, there's the rhododendron species garden, which mm -hmm. is uh, just south of the airport, actually. So if you're needing a quick garden fix when you first land, I'll probably take you there. Um, not just rhododendrons, of course, but uh, a beautiful woodland garden. They have a wonderful stumpery. So yeah, I'm also obsessed with ferns. <laughs> um, so all sorts of different kinds. Um, I'm a, I'm a been a, on a pyrosia kick uh, recently. So I love pyrosia lingua and all of its different Ooh, cultivars wow. and forms. This is uh, pyrosia lingua cristata, and then uh, pyrosia shirii, uh, which is uh, wonderfully hardy, upright, beautiful uh, uh, felt fern. So yeah, we, uh, we would check that out. The mechanopsis would be in full bloom. Uh, they're just about finished right now, actually. Um, and then uh, where else? And I'll probably take you here um, mm -hmm. where I work. Um, uh, I work for um, a hospitality company called McMinimins. Um, they're based out of Portland, Oregon, and they've taken a former high school, junior high school here in the city of Bothell and transformed it into hotels, restaurants, a movie theater. We have a pool. We have uh, event spaces um, that are just now beginning to, to open, but very um, elaborate gardens that I manage. Manage. So that's mm -hmm. my main bread and butter job here is uh, mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. for McMinimins. And um, so I'm peeking outside all the time because we're like, what's Riz doing in, by himself? Yeah. <laughs> in his laptop having a very long around. coffee break. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I also just, I'm checking my phone too to make sure that my, uh, 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 my yes. horticulturist and my assistant here yeah. uh, uh, has what she needs to. Um, and how, how big how big are the gardens there is how big um so the property here is about 5.3 acres total mm -hmm. and i would say about yeah, a good third of that is um is is landscape mm -hmm. and um the beauty of being able to come and visit here and and the, just the company in itself is um you know you can do the garden stuff but let's say you get hungry or you or you know have um, um you know or um need a drink or something like that you can basically walk into one of the bar buildings and visit one of our bars and you know mm -hmm. and have or you know, have a sit down for breakfast lunch or dinner um and of course we have the hotel so you can mm -hmm. stay here um and also we have a pool across from the parking lot um mm -hmm. that uh we've uh converted it was the community pool uh and it's still the community pool um and you um, basically, yeah, go in for a swim and they've taken where the ble uh, bleachers would be, the rafters where people would sit to watch the swim meets. They take that out and they built up a restaurant up above that overlooks the pool, which is a tiki bar. And then we've done some tropical plantings around the pool as well. We have a desert garden, the vegetable garden that we grow food for the restaurants. Um, and um, so, yeah, so it's become a little kind of garden destination here. Um, and then, yeah, and um, uh, different private gardens as well, depending on the interest. Everyone, every gardener yeah, has their own, you know, focus. Uh, you know, some people like native stuff, some people um, like more formal gardens, uh, mm -hmm. more uh, wild. Or if you want to go to the mountains, we'll go for a hike. Um, yeah, you know, we yeah. have so much, uh, very close by here, just, you know, uh, you know, to the, you know, Cascade Range, to the Olympic, you know, Peninsula even, mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to botanize and, or just to get away from the city. Yeah. Um, you're all welcome. And oh, it would be lovely wonderful. to have you all. So when, and, if, and likewise, if you were coming over to the UK, which gardens would you be heading to? Oh gosh. Um, I, I, I've been so fortunate to have been to so many already uh, there in the UK and also made so many wonderful friends like you guys. So mm. I'm just uh, uh, I'm very grateful for it. Um, let's see, been to Kew, went to Wisley. Um, my good friend, John Massey at Ashwood Nurseries. Yeah. That was a wonderful, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And I uh, had a great visit with him. Um, uh, John Grimshaw is a, a dear friend of mine in New York. So uh, mm -hmm. I actually spoke for the Yorkshire Arboretum, which was, uh, I considered my first international speaking engagement, which was, uh, which was great. And I was so nervous because it's, you know, it's John <laughs> Grimshaw. And it's like, um, but I think it went well. I mean, it's very similar sure, audience, it, you know. Yeah. 
And so we got to go to Castle Howard, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and then my buddy, Sean Barton, I um, went up to, uh, into Cheshire and did visit him and we went to vi vi different gardens there. Um, I went to, with my former professor to uh, Chatsworth. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went up to Wales to uh, Bodmin Gardens. So mm -hmm. that was incredible. I've never been to Scotland yet, so I hope to visit Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. um, but um, again, being a Rose fan, Modestfont Abbey, is that still mm -hmm. around? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. It's very close to me. It's about an hour. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, oh, yeah. This is the perfect time of year as well, except they're probably a little bit behind. But yeah, Modestfont Abbey. Yeah. Is, yeah. If you love so, roses, oh my goodness. Yeah, and one of my early, I guess, mentors and another person that I uh, wish to have met was Graham Stewart Thomas. Mm -hmm. So, um, and um, so, yeah, and uh, let's see, what else have I been to? Uh, I've never been to the southern part of, um, of, of England, uh, oh, where it's milder. You've got to go to Cornwall. You know, Cornwall, the Cornwall, so exactly. People, yeah. I mean, so many people don't get much beyond London and home counties, but no, Cornwall is, incredi is an incredibly mm -hmm. special place. I've heard, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, the garden uh, culture there is, is very interesting. I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's that wet Atlantic mild climate you can never really mm, tell whether it's mm, june mm. or january and then of course there's uh, have you been to jimmy blake's garden in ireland yes jimmy <laughs> is a very very dear friend uh yeah. we haven't been chatting recently i'm not trying to take it personally because i know we're I all so busy very busy oh, he's, uh, yeah very slam but every now and then you know yeah like, before i go to bed my phone like rings and it's like yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. there's jimmy just saying hello but um and, yeah i did a, a talk for him actually as well for his plants persons course and of course been to his garden and June's garden. Have you guys yeah, been to June's yeah, garden? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So um, it's if I could live in Ireland, if I could meet someone in Ireland and fall in love and you know, like go into. <laughs> we'll, we'll organize it for you. It would be wonderful. I mean, I, again, I, when I came there, I'm, I'm seeing it through a tourist lens, you know, yeah, yeah. because I couldn't have been treated any better. Jimmy picked me up, you know, at the airport and, um, and, you know, first I had to eat. So, you know, I went to the grocery store first. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, it's so funny because he actually made dinner for me that night. He picked me up. He burnt his, the first, um, <laughs> the first round. Um, so it was nice. We were able to like cook together. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, so, you know, I got to see gardens with different people. And then uh, he drove me up to uh, Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, so we got to visit some gardens there. And I got to visit with my, um, uh, with uh, my friend Conrad McCormick. He's up mm -hmm. in um, um, Valley Castles. And so uh, I was great to spend time with him. He is a, a, a very dear friend who just, you know, we're just, you know, online, you know, uh, messenger, you know, buddies, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, I got to stay with him and meet his family. And uh, he showed me around. Um, mm -hmm. And, and um, we, we went to Donegal as well mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. some of the gardens over there. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, the climate, like, I've never seen uh, like pseudo panics and uh, cordyline and device in the Visa, mm -hmm. for example, just massive. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and the big leaf rhododendrons too. I didn't realize there were like weeds over there. <laughs> um, and uh, oh my gosh, it, so it's, yeah. it was an absolute uh, dream. So I'm looking forward to uh, to visiting uh, yeah. the, the UK and, and Ireland again, because I yeah. know there's more to see, more people to meet. Um, yeah. And, uh, oh, and actually a, a little bit of sidetrack, a little bit, but a, a bit of news. Um, so I've actually written a book. Um, oh, wow. That is, uh, be, is published by a UK publisher. Right. And um, so I'm uh, hoping that maybe in, in, um, in promoting the book that, uh, that they would fly me uh, there um, to the UK to be able to do so. And, and what's the name um, of the book, Riz? What's it called? Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share oh, that. Oh, is yet, it secret? Mind. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I actually just talked to them about this. Like, what right, can well, I share must, about must, the book? Yeah, okay. Um, we'll, and, um, we'll, so what I what I can tell you though, it's uh, it's a children's nonfiction book, oh. and um, and the and I actually was uh, am writing a children's book right now, but it was funny that um, they sent me an email uh, saying, uh, "Hey, um, we're writing this children's nonfiction book. Would you inter be interested in authoring it?" And I'm like, well, I'm actually working on this other book, but you know, I need to get my foot in the door, basically. So um, we talked and, um, and so it's basically their idea it was their original proposal. Um, and I just kind of went with it. And, um, and the cool part though is, um, so I, you know, I would submit my writing pieces and then they would send back um, the layouts and 
to see my words illustrated by the illustrator because you know they choose the illustrator of mm -hmm. course um is pretty cool wow. so um but yeah it um uh, they're uh, releasing it in uh, march of next year yeah. And um, so they said probably six months before that's when they would kind of begin to kind of, you know, uh, give out little teasers and stuff. Um, but yeah, and are, there, are, there, are there plants in the book? Are there plants? Absolutely. It is a plant based focused okay, okay, um, uh, okay. book, of course. Um, yeah. And I think another exciting thing about it, too, is um, it's going to be published in different languages. Oh, fantastic. So I, um, that, that was really great. And, you know, so even though it wasn't my uh, it isn't my own sort of, you know, idea initially, um, I think it was an opportunity to do a lot of research um, yeah. and talk about plants that I'm not too familiar with yeah. um, to, you know, to share this, um, this story or to share this theme, I guess, that we developed for the, um, yeah. for the book. So, um, well, it, as you yeah. were talking about the book, the one thing I was going to ask you is, is, do you go into schools and talk to school children? Is that something that you do? It's something I would love to do more, to be honest. Should. I think you should. Um, It'd be really yeah. valuable, really valuable. Yeah. 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 And I think so too, because one, um, they can see someone that's, you know, a little bit younger. And also one, they see someone of color mm -hmm. that's, you know, speaking about, you know, these different topics, I think yeah. is really valuable. And I, I take that role, you know, to heart to, to represent um, yeah. you know, uh, what I'm doing. Um, and, uh, and I have actually, uh, my cousin is actually a preschool teacher teacher mm -hmm. and she asked me to do an activity with her students and I was a bit nervous because um uh you know my usual crowd is you know you guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the, the you know the garden clubs and that mm -hmm. sort of thing so I, it's always a little intimidating to speak to like my, my peers that are my age you know I always have to mm -hmm. feel like I have to work harder to impress them with what I'm doing but with the with the little kiddos it was fun because I I brought in cut the flowers and foliage and I just taught them the basics of, um, mm -hmm. of flower arranging mm -hmm. and I approached it from a um, from a garden building a garden so basically what we do is um, we're planting a garden in um, you know in, in, a, in a container so I asked mm -hmm. them to bring a, a, a mason jar from home and we fill it with water and we basically you know all right kids we're gonna plant we're gonna plant a garden yeah so the, um, the water is the soil and then you know the, your garden is you know this container and I basically go through the basic steps of how we plant a garden mm -hmm. so I talk about you know the structure and the bones you know so first we plant the trees so they have little maple you know whatever you know I've mm -hmm. chosen and you know to plant first you know that concept of planting you know uh, first planting and then um, then comes you know the you know the flowers and you know and all the fun stuff and that yeah. sort of thing yeah, yeah. and um, I teach them the golden rule of, of flower arranging is when you design you know make sure there is no leaves you know um, yeah. in the water so yeah. all right everyone let's say it all together <laughs> no <laughs> leaves in the water so um, you know, learning little things like that yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. still you know in the early stages of, of that and also to understanding you know their kids you know mm -hmm. um, you want to um, uh, encourage their curiosity but you also mm -hmm. don't want to overwhelm them the yeah. time you spend with them has to be very yeah. very short yeah and like yeah. right now like they've all be asleep by now yeah. um yeah. you know so I had to you know keep that in mind because yeah. I tend to yeah. you know drag on yeah. um but you've got so, so much you have got so much to share and also your own story and you know you're talking about your youth and when you know when you you had to kind of get through that barrier of being the geeky plant kid you know and 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 you didn't give it up you kept it going and that's wonderful so you know to be able to pass that on would be and to show children that you know you can work through this and uh yeah that's fantastic absolutely fantastic yeah thank you thank you so, yeah so, really, so i'm for, for it it's <laughs> been so lovely talking to you and i know i know um, we're going to, well. we, we will invite you back um in the in, yeah, the, we'll in the winter do a webinar of some kind from your very impressive list yes home in on, really, riz it? has got a list this long of talks that he does so it's it's, it's a, difficult to choose but we will definitely be having you back to, <laughs> to yes, yes to do yes. one of those we've got some lovely comments that have come in we'll, uh, riz. we'll send you the chat we'll send, we'll you, send you the comments because there's been some gorgeous comments but um oh, thank you I, all I'll, everyone i'll just i'll just, I'll just read it. i'll read well there's a couple of lovely ones this has been an inspiring talk with a wonderful young man riz you are welcome in south carolina anytime that's from Wendy yes. <laughs> and um, I'll check start checking flights right now so yeah, I've been fully yeah, vaccinated yeah. and I yeah so <laughs> 
exactly. So, so yeah. So, you know, we will definitely be asking you back in in the, Thank you. the winter when um, when people are happy to sit in front of a computer again. And yeah. but thank you, thank you, Riz, for thank sharing. Thank you so much. Story. That was yeah, you're and very you're welcome, angry. and thank you for s sitting through uh, and, and and listening to let me share my story. Yeah, and uh, I look forward to, to seeing and, you all again. And and it's interesting because a couple of weeks ago we were down in uh, California with Bernard Trainer. Oh yes, uh, oh I love his work. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. and and Look Bernard at was work talking as an artist as well. Yeah, yeah, and he was talking about you know um, taking groups around to private gardens. So I said, oh Bernard, you can be our tour guide for Garden Masterclass California. But now Riz, you are going to be our tour guide for the Pacific Northwest because. <laughs> Not only can you take us to wonderful gardens, but you can feed us really well. And that's very important. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. so watch this space when Garden Masterclass hits the West Coast. <laughs> I'll be ready. Yeah, and lovely. looking forward to it. Oh, lovely, Riz. Thank you so much and have a good right. day today. And uh, Thank you. Have a good evening and day where whoever, is, <laughs> wherever yeah, you all well, are. We're all in different, different time you. zones. But it's yes. been such a pleasure and you're, you're amazing. Keep, keep it up and um, right. we'll Thank see you, you soon. Thank you. Good work. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, hope, to, hope to have you back soon. Yeah. Take care. Thanks, okay. everyone, for tuning in. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.